everybody. Today I've got for you a sequel of sorts. Um, it's basically a follow-on to the video I did last time on controlling t totals and subtotals. And in that last video, I talked about ways to turn off your subtotals and your grand totals, um, both through the UI and through DAX. And so what I wanted to do today was instead of talking about turning subtotals on and off, I want to talk about fixing those totals and subtotals if the measures you create don't produce the right results originally. And there are two reasons I wanted to address this. The first of which is it occurs fairly often. Um, and so it's, it's something that comes up a lot in the forum. We see this question repeated um, over and over in different forms. And the second reason is, is that when you, when you address it in the context of a matrix, it's probably the most difficult of the broken totals problems. And so if you learn how to address it in the matrix, it's kind of the final video game boss in the broken totals game. And so if you can beat this boss, you basically know how to do what you need to do to fix your totals in cards, in tables, in other visuals where totals may break. And so I wanted to go through kind of a systematic process for fixing matrix totals that are broken and really break that down by components. And so what I what I pulled was in a relatively old forum post um, that was by a member named Daniel Safrady. And it's a it's a fairly complex question that he asked and we don't really need to go through the details of it i'll put the the address of the the question in the youtube comments um, but basically what we want to do in this is just he his measure was complex enough that it broke the totals in a fairly spectacular way and i wanted to start off with really broken totals here to show you how to fix even the even the worst of the broken totals problems and so if we look at um, the context of his measures, um, what he has is um, a measure called spread revenue, which is the, the branch of total opportunity revenue and a lookup scaling factor. And total opportunity revenue is just a simple sum measure, whereas the, the uh, lookup scaling factor is a more complicated um, kind of multi-criteria lookup that we do based on um, a series of filter conditions. And again, this is really not, not important, but it's just an example of a way that totals can break. And I'll show you what happens if we take that spread revenue and we drop it into the, into the, uh, the field wells here for the, the matrix. So if we do that and we drop that in here, what you'll see is, and you just have to take my word for it here, that the the base rows calculate properly, but the total rows don't calculate at all. That um, in many cases in Power BI, when you have totals, subtotals, and grand totals, Power BI will at least take a guess. And oftentimes that guess is wrong and you've got to fix the totals. But in this case, Power BI just gives the, the equivalent of the shrug. It just, it doesn't have any idea what those totals should be. It doesn't even have a guess. And so it just, it just labels those as blank. And so what we've got to do is we've got to build in some additional logic here that tells Power BI what to do in the row totals, the column totals, and the grand totals. And you'll see here in this in this graphic, what I've done is kind of broken out those four different cases that we have to solve. So what we've got here is the base rows. And this calculates correctly. This is where you've got context for both the, the rows and the columns. And if you have that sufficient amount of context, this spread revenue measure calculates just fine. Now, the, the second case is where you have context in the columns. So you've got your short month, but you don't have any context for rows. And Power BI doesn't know what to do here, nor does it know what to do in the case where you've got the, the flip side, 
where you've got row context but no column context. And it really doesn't know what to do in this case D where you have neither. And so in many cases where you're looking at multiple conditions, um, you could do this as a nested if statement, but we've got a better construct in Power BI that makes it a lot easier to see the logic, and that is the switch true statement. And so I wanted to spend um, a little bit of time here talking about um, switch true because there's an important there's an important element to building a switch true statement. And what I've done here is just taken a kind of a, a trivial example where we've got um, some zoological data, and what we want to do is classify that data. And with the idea down the road that we're looking for kangaroos in that data set. And so what we've got here is a switch to true statement that we've built. And we built it from the general to the specific. And I want to show you why this doesn't work. Because in a switch true statement, what it does is it goes through each of the, the conditions. And the first one that's true, it exits out of. And so in this case, where we go from the general it says if animals class is in monotremes, marsupials, and placental, then it gets the, the label of mammal. And you just have to take my word for the fact that these are, these are the only three types of mammals, the only three classes of mammals. So these are, these are comprehensive. So if it's a mammal, it's going to be one of these. And so if we, if we take a look at what happens, that basically the, the data comes in and we go to switch true, and if it's one of these classes, it gets mammal. Now, what this means is it's never going to get down to this criteria here of marsupial or the one that we want, which is kangaroo, because these are all mammals. And so if this statement is true, it's going to exit out. If this statement is not true, then this statement's not going to be true this statement's not going to be true, and it's going to go to the default, which is not a mammal, kind of the catch-all. So instead of building out from the general to the specific, what you have to do is you have to build your switch true statement from the specific to the general, and then the catch-all at the end. And so what we've got here instead is if the family is Macropodidae, then it gets kangaroo. And so this is the most specific condition. So in this case, it will pick up. Here we have actually a famous kangaroo named Roger. Um, and it will pick Roger up here and label him as a kangaroo. And then it'll go down here to the quokka, which is not a macropodidae, so it's not a kangaroo. So it goes down here and says, OK, it's in this set that's quokka. It gets marsupial. When it gets to my cat, it's going to be false on both of these conditions, but it is going to be true on mammal. And then if we had like a, a fish here, it would be false on all these and go to the go to the catch all. So this would work properly in terms of going from the specific to the general to the catch all. And if we take this back to the, the example here of the, the fixing matrix total, it's really the exact same thing that what we've got here is we've got the, the specific. And so this has to be the first statement in our switch true. And then we've got the, the catch-all, which is D, which is there's no context. So we've got, we've got context for both the, the month, the short month, and period here. And then in the middle, we've got these two B and C conditions, one of which B has context for the column, but not the row, and C has context for the row, but not the column. And so if we jump in, so here's the, the big measure. And what I want to do is jump into tabular editor 3, which is really my favorite way now of debugging um, and understanding these measures. And so if we go to the measure here, and we go to this spread revenue with fixed totals. This is the this is the long what looks like complicated DAX, but what I want to do is break this down by component. And so what we've got here is just two variables that basically pick up the selected value of 
our short month and our period. Um, and that's going to determine context. Then what we've got is a virtual table. And this virtual table is basically a virtual version of the matrix. And so what we what we do here is through this add columns and cross join um, construct, we basically recreate the we recreate this matrix here virtually. And I can show you how we do that, which is that if we take this and put this into a, a DAX query, let's create a new DAX query here. And DAX queries always start with evaluate. And then we just paste the, the DAX in here and hit F5, what we can see is basically what it does is it takes cross join and then it cross joins these two single column tables, one which is the period and the other which is the short month. And it basically creates every possible combination of period and short month, which is what the matrix does. And so if we scroll down here, what we see is basically the matrix just turned on its side. And there's within tabular editor, there's another way of, of visualizing this called the pivot grid. And I can show you this here if we take new pivot grid. And then we go and find short month, uh, dates. So we have short month here. And we drop that on our rows. And we've got, oh, I'm sorry, wait, we drop short month on our columns. And then we've got period. And we drop that on our rows. And then we go to our, our measures. Um, so sh uh, spread revenue. And we drop that in the data in the data well basically what this does is this produces a a visual which is equal to that matrix visual in power bi but we can do this right within tabular editor and check and see and we, what we can see here is that it, it reproduces the numbers correctly but not the totals using that spread revenue so if we go back to the expression editor then what we've got to do is build out the logic that creates those um, those total fields. And we've got this switch true statement. Here we go. This is the proper one. Um, switch true statement. And we have has one value here. And what we're doing here is we're testing to see whether or not there's context in each of the the two fields that we need context in. So the first condition, if you remember our discussion of from the most specific to the least specific, is that condition A, and this is the base rows. So if we have context for period and we have context for short month, then we just use the spread revenue measure because that was producing the correct results in those data rows. So now what we want to do is build out the logic for for B, which is where we've got context in the column. So we have has one value for short month, but not for period. And if we look back here, what we've got is if it's has one value for short month, um, but not for period. And we don't have to say not for period because we've already said if it has for period up here, exit out with the spread revenue measure. So by definition, in the way um, switch true is, is created, which is now if we just say, if this is true, then this is the only one that's going to be true because we've covered the other case above. So now what we want to do is we want to force the logic and we want to take this, this virtual matrix and take our spread revenue measure and sum it across all the values of period. So what we've got here, if we go back to the visual, 
we're taking each of the short months and we're summing them against each of the values of period. So what we're doing is we're basically forcing a vertical total on each of these short months and providing the logic that gets us this, this B row. And so if we go back, then the next thing we've got is basically the flip side where we've got, we've got has one value in period, but not in short month. And so what we're doing here is now taking the sum X of the virtual table, the spread revenue measure, and we're summing it over all the values of short month. And so what this looks like is going back here in, in area C, taking each of the values of period and summing it over the values of short month. And so by doing that, we get, we get this row total and then we get this row total. And then finally, what we've got is we've got the catch-all measure, which is if we don't have context in either of the two, then what we do is we just take the, the total sum of the virtual table. We don't, we don't force any additional context. We just, if we look at this DAX query, we basically just take the grand total of this, this entire column. And what that does is that produces this value right here. And so what we can do is if we take this right here and we go to the field well and we drop our spread revenue into our spread revenue with totals fix into the values, what we see is we get the proper totals for the row totals for the column totals and for the grand totals. So that switch true is basically going through and imposing all the logic we need in order to get the, the correct totals. And so this is, this is basically a construct that you can impose on a table, on a card, where basically what you do is you build out the, the virtual logic for the base rows, which typically will be working if you've got a correct measure and then just impose the logic. Um, if it's a table, it's typically gonna be, gonna be here. If it's a card, it's typically gonna be this D box. And just impose the logic that you need in order to force the, the proper total. So that's basically what I wanted to cover today. Um, I hope that's clear. Um, what I will do is post the um, PBIX file in the a link in the comment section so you can basically delve in here, look at the DAX, play around with the uh, the logic yourself. Um, but that's basically it for today. Um, as always, thanks very much for watching and we will see you in the next video. So thanks very much. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.